Coming up, a young woman is set free after struggling with nightmares and a motorcycle accident changes a man's life for good. Well, welcome to 700 Club Canada and Bill, welcome. Thank you for joining us outside of the studio. I'm glad you're with me. Yeah, we had a few situations beyond my control, but I am here with you for the week, Lori, and with all awesome. of you wonderful viewers. Oh, that's so great. You know, there's a lot going on in our world, Bill, as you can see the Israeli-Palestinian conflict that has been taking place. And uh, what are your thoughts on that? I'm sure people are asking a lot of questions. There's a lot of concern. Yeah, you know, I've been getting a lot of questions about the violence we see in the Bible and how that's kind of been translating into the world today. And I think the reality is, is that the Bible often appears violent because life can be violent. I mean, we see that on the news. We see that not only overseas, but even our own homes, even our own hearts. And so I think the great news for us as followers of Jesus is that Jesus came into the world to be a peacemaker, to restore peace to this world. And we are to be agents of peace, even when we see conflict, that God loves all people and wants all people to know his love. I, that's the best response I can think of. Yeah, and that's why we pray pray really for peace for for everyone involved, right? And that yes. uh, that's certainly the desire. And and you know, it's amazing that just a little bit of faith we're going to see in our program today can open the door for God to give us the desires of our hearts. And even doing so, He removes some unwanted or harmful desires, as you're going to see on today's show. One of our stories, Eddie shares how God in one night, one night, set him free from cocaine addiction and gave him the life he always wanted but never thought possible. And today you'll also see a powerful devotional on the pursuit of joy from speaker Talisi Guerra. But first, after years struggling to find meaning for her life, this is how Jahan discovered the truth. People looking possessed and shrieking and shouting, you know, would dance and, you know, walk through the fire and walk towards you and touch your head and tell you, oh, you're chosen by the gods and you're chosen by the ancestors and, and they will appear to you in the form of a beast. Look out for the lion, look out for the snake. Growing up in Uganda's capital city, Jahan Burns clearly remembers the witch doctors, their rituals, and the images that haunted her dreams. You know, I would wake up just gasping for breath. I was being attacked by you know, like a lion, or, you know, just being scratched all over. Or I would wake up and I would actually feel pain. She was seven when her father, a high-ranking officer in Idi Amin's army, was killed in an ambush. The loss was devastating and the nightmares got worse. I woke up at night sweating, sometimes screaming. I was seeing my father's corpse. When my father left my world, everything lost meaning. And I sh a part of me died. She prayed to her ancestors and consulted the witch doctor. He told her she had a spiritual guide who was always with her, especially at night. Sometimes I felt like these cold fingers were touching the back of my neck. Then I always felt like someone was always sleeping in my bed. The restless nights persisted for another five years. So at 12 years old, Jahan converted to Islam, hoping that would bring a relief. I was willing to become a Muslim because I was desperate. I was tired of the nightmares. I was tired of the fear. I recited those prayers very religiously, but I never had a response. The following year, her mother secured a grant for Jahan to attend a boarding school in Gayasa, Uganda. The school was run by British missionaries. I just did not adjust well at all. That nightmares increased. This was the first time too that I was around Christian students and I absolutely detested them because I didn't understand what they were happy about, you know. I, I didn't have the feeling they had. I felt like I was always wanting to explode, so angry and so hateful. Even then, the other girls treated her with kindness. One day, a girl told Jahan about a dream she had. She said, 
the Holy Ghost appeared to me last night and he said, Jahan is going to get saved. I was so mad. I just started yelling at her. I'm like, I hate you. The table in between us rocks and her pencil rolled down. I shove the table as she's bending to pick her pencil and it falls on her neck. While the injury wasn't serious, the girl needed time to recover. When she returned to class days later, Jahan expected her to retaliate. Instead, she forgave her. I was so moved. She was giving me mercy when I didn't deserve it. I walked away. But something in me broke, seeing that girl's kindness. Just days later, another classmate told Jahan that her dad had died too. She gave her a Bible and told her what she did when she was scared. You get your Bible and you just sleep with it. When you wake up and you're afraid, then you hug it and it chases the fear away. When the nightmares returned that night, Jahan opened the Bible and came to Psalm 91. You will not be afraid of the terror of the night. No harm will come near you, for he'll give his angels charge over you. You will trample on the lion and the serpent. She stayed up all night reading. I said, God, if you will take away this darkness, if you will set me free, I will serve you for the rest of my life. I began to sob. When the tears finally stopped, I felt so clean, so pure. The more I read the Bible, the more I fell in love with Jesus. I said, Jesus, come into my heart. Jesus began to replace my bad dreams with good dreams. Jahan immigrated to the U.S. in 2004, where she graduated from law school and eventually married. These days, she has no trouble sleeping, but for this wife, mother of two, attorney, active church member, and volunteer, the problem is getting enough sleep. God came in and became the father that I didn't have. I would have been a good candidate for a mental institute had not it been for Jesus. But he healed me, he set me free, he restored me. I have a good life because of Jesus. He can do it for anyone. What an incredibly moving story. Whoa, you can see in her experience the reality of the demonic and how it almost destroyed her, robbing her of the life that Jesus was ready to give her. And if you think that these kinds of demonic experiences only happen in places like Africa, well, think again. I believe that because of the openness of witchcraft and witch doctors in these countries, that the spiritual realm is more tangible. But in North America, the enemy uses more subtle ways to rob people of the freedom that Jesus offers. See, the enemy torments in dreams, and far too often people are even diagnosed with a mental illness when it's actually demonic. I've personally seen many people set free from nightmares and the demonic experiences when they thought they were losing their minds. And when they called out to Jesus to deliver them, they were set free. So let me ask you, are you being tormented with thoughts in your mind or even in your dreams? Maybe like Jahan, you feel an evil presence or you're having nightmares. I wanna pause and I wanna pray with you because this is the way that we find freedom. Jesus is the freedom giver, and he's more powerful than anything, the demonic, anything that Satan can throw at you. So would you right now just pause and pray with me and say, Lord Jesus Christ, I call on you to set me free from the attack of the demonic. Cut me off from all of Satan's assignments against me and I plead the blood of the Lord Jesus over my life. I surrender all of myself to your leadership fully, Lord Jesus, my mind, my thoughts, my emotion, my body, and my will, I surrender to you, amen. John 8, 36 says, if the Son has set you free, you will be free indeed. Call on Jesus and give us a call because we're here to help you, 1-855-759-0700. We'll be right back with a powerful devotional from the top of the Rocky Mountains.
give us a call. Someone should download the CBN Family app to get an easy view at all of CBN's media. Having access easily to that faith-based content is just so invaluable. This is a great way I could take that with me on the go, you know? This app is really easy to use. My favorite feature is the fact that you can look at like the different like feeds, like the news, animations. This app has exactly what you're looking for as far as Christian values go. I'm standing here in the beautiful Rocky Mountains, taking in the glory and the splendor of this incredible mountain view. I've always loved the mountains. But the thing is, as much as I can appreciate the beautiful scenery I find when I'm out here in the Rockies, at the end of the day, I still never climbed one of these mountains. Quite frankly, if I were to stand at the base of this mountain, looking up at the summit and thinking about what it took to get there on foot, I would be overwhelmed with the magnitude of the task ahead of me. To tell you the truth, I've spent most of my life feeling much the same way about joy. As a kid in Sunday school, we used to sing a song with the lyrics, I've got peace like a river, I've got love like an ocean, and I've got joy like a fountain in my soul. But to me, joy never felt like an abundant fountain at all that overflowed in my life. Instead, joy felt much more like a mountain because joy didn't come naturally to me. It was a constant challenge. And standing at the base of that mountain of joy, I could only look up at the summit with an overwhelming feeling of hopelessness, knowing I wasn't cut out to make that climb. And maybe you felt the same way about joy. In fact, maybe you feel that way in your life right now, whether you're battling depression, going through a slump, or simply navigating the mundane challenges of everyday life, joy just seems out of reach. But what if it didn't have to be? What if? Instead of seeing joy as the summit of this enormous mountain that we'll never be able to climb, we could learn to discover that joy is possible at every step of the journey. What if we understood that the mountain we're climbing isn't joy after all, it's simply life. And rather than joy being some far off distant goal, instead it's a powerful tool that can revolutionize our experience and propel us up the mountain. Proverbs 17:22 says, a joyful heart is good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. And I'll tell you what, climbing a mountain sounds hard to me at the best of times, never mind trying to do it with dried up, brittle bones. And God knows that. He knows that in order to navigate the mountain of life, we need all the help we can get. And so he offers us this powerful gift, this good medicine to help us. He offers us joy, his joy. Joy that isn't defined by our circumstances. It's not something we have to strive to achieve or strain toward like the peak of a mountain. It's simply something we receive when we rest in Him, when we allow Him to be our guide up the mountain instead of trying to navigate it on our own. And when we do that, suddenly joy doesn't seem so out of reach. It becomes for us what God intended it to be all along, a healing agent, fuel for our journey through life good medicine. I'm like, man, I've been shot in the head. I've been run over by a truck and I'm still here. Maybe God does have a plan in my life. When he was a young child, Eddie Ramirez came to America on the freedom flights from Cuba in 1967. His father came a year later and was aggressive and angry. They never formed a bond. I was cheated. I was cheated because I needed a father in my life and he wasn't there. He wasn't there for me. When he was 13, his parents divorced. Eddie took out his anger fighting kids in the neighborhood. Some older boys noticed how tough he was and pulled him into their drug trafficking ring. Eddie finally got the attention he craved. I needed somebody to accept me because like I said before, I was cheated. I, I, I needed somebody that was older than me to accept me and embrace me and, and say, okay, you know, you're part of this. But then there's something missing. So then what, what is the next thing? Well, let me have, let me get some drugs. Let me start doing drugs. He eventually became a drug dealer to high profile clients and the sense of power took him further down a dark path of drug addiction. You're always chasing that first high. It got me to the point of no return, that I was like, I can't stop. There's no way of me stopping. 
I had power, you know. I had power, I had money. People were looking for me. People needed my merchandise, you know, and, and, and I was ruthless, so I felt like I was in control. In reality, Eddie's life was out of control and reckless. He crashed his motorcycle and was run over by a truck, nearly killing him. When he recovered, his best friend, who had become a Christian, took Eddie to church. Once I was there in church, I was like, what's here? There's nothing here for me, you know? I'm not making no money here or nothing. There's, what's, what's the church about? There's, I, I need to go out there and make money. He continued selling drugs and living a life of violence. He even survived a gunshot to the head. Cocaine fueled his emptiness, and he felt like there was no escape. I felt disgusted the way that, that I would, like, just stay up all night and, and, and do drugs, and my nose was, like, falling apart. <laughs> Cocaine is not a drug that, that you want to start doing because once you start doing it, there's no, there's no turning back. Desperate for a way out of his addiction, he turned to his mom for help. She checked him into a rehab facility where Eddie had a life-changing encounter. I remember one night I'm there in my room. I get a, a visitation from, I, from what I believe it was the Lord Jesus. And he comes into, the, into my dream, into my vision, and he tells me, look, you, you really want to change your life. And, I, and I'm like inside of me, yes, I want to change my life because I can't live like this anymore. And he tells me, all you have to do is walk through this door. And if you walk through the door, I, your life will be changed. And I look at the door, I look, and the door was a real thin door with a light behind it. You know, and I'm like, I'm willing to walk through this door. When I went through the door, like, all the burden that was on me, everything that was there, all my, all my problems, everything just like fell off me. I knew that once I walked through that door, my life was changed. You know, he came, he, he saved me right on time. Eddie gave his life to Christ and was immediately set free from drugs. I didn't have the desire to, to do cocaine, to do marijuana, to do nothing else. I didn't want to do nothing. It was like God literally took it out of my life completely. Like, like some people, they tell me, no, you know, God is working on me. God wasn't working on me. He did the work right away. You know, I couldn't believe that God would save somebody like me. Like, I was such a bad person that he would really literally come and save me. Like, I couldn't wrap my mind around that. I was like, you know, why, God, why? Why would you save me? You know, what, what, why would you do that? And Lord, you took care of me. You took care of me. When I needed somebody, when I needed a father, you came up, you showed up. And, and that's what he does. That's what he does. And that's what he does to many people out there. When we don't have that father, when we don't have that person in our lives, he shows up and he becomes that father of the fatherless. And that's what he did to me. And till today, I believe that. Eddie's been clean for 28 years and now pastors a church in Florida. The joy of his new life overflows to everyone he meets. I'm grateful for everything that he has given me, my family, my children, my grandkids. I'm very grateful for everything that he has given me. But all I need is him. Everything else I could lose. Everything else I could lose. But he makes me whole. You know, I really resonated with the statement, I needed somebody to accept me. A friend, a mom, anybody. And I think the reality is that even for me growing up, ah, that's all I wanted. I just wanted to feel like I fit, like I belonged. And in this world, that can sometimes be really difficult. And what I love about Jesus is that he decided to do something about the feelings of alienation we had 
with God and even with others. I love this word incarnation. It simply means God with us. And you know, when I was a little kid, there would be often times when I just needed someone to be with me. I, I love this story I heard of a kid who was having like night tremors and uh, terrors. And so his mom, you know, said, you know, I, it's okay. God is with you. But he said, yeah, I, I know he is, but I just need someone with skin on. And I think what most people need is they need to see God with skin on. And can I just help you? If you're a follower of Jesus, that's you. Uh, the church in Romans 15, 7, we're reminded to accept one another then just as Christ accepted you in order to bring praise to God. I love this word accept in the Greek. It literally means to move toward in order to receive. So here's my encouragement for all of us today. Are we people who accept others, are moving toward them so that they can experience the love of God in and through us? Because that's really what people need. I mean, great theology is awesome. Great worship experiences are amazing. But most people just need to see God with skin on, and he lives in you. So maybe you need a church. We have a great pamphlet we'd love to put in your hands. It's called Choosing a Church. And if you need prayer with anything, we'd love to pray with you today. Why not call us at 1-855-759-0700 and someone would love to pray with you and maybe help you find that church where you can belong and be accepted. And if you do belong to a church, let's be that place where people feel safe. But this is the truth of who Jesus really is. We'll be right back. God is for us, a special audio recording from Pat Robertson. Neither height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Reduce stress and anxiety while dwelling on the promises of God. God is for us, verses of salvation, peace, and victory from the Book of Romans. Available now. So what does freedom mean to you? Is it free to do whatever you want? Or is it free from the things that hold you back and free to live the life you were made to live? Well, I would suggest it's the latter. You and I were created to be free. The Bible tells us this over and over again. And there's two sides of freedom. One side that frees you from something and the other side that frees you for something. So first, you must know what you've been freed from so you no longer let it hold you back. And the Bible tells us that sin and death were holding us back, holding us back from experiencing a friendship and intimacy with God and the life that he created us for. That's one of the reasons Jesus came. Romans 8 verses 2 and 3 says it this way, for the power of the life-giving spirit has freed you through Christ Jesus from the power of sin that leads to death. God destroyed sin's control over us by giving us his son as a sacrifice for our sins. So you see, through the power of the Holy Spirit and the work accomplished by Jesus on the cross and rising again, sin and death no longer are holding us back. We're free from them. So what are we freed for? Well, again, it's found in Jesus. He didn't only come to free us from sin and death, but he came to show us what it looks like to live free. He's our example of freedom, and he tells us that we can actually live the way that he lived. How? By allowing the Holy Spirit to lead our life, just like Jesus did. See, he set aside his privileges as God and became fully human, which required him to depend on the Holy Spirit. This enabled Jesus to live free while on the earth, free from the power of sin. Sin was and is still present. But Jesus shows us that it doesn't have power over us anymore. We no longer need to fear death because we are confident that we've been set free to live in eternity with God, where we'll realize our full freedom in its fullness. But we don't have to wait until heaven. Jesus said, whom the Son has set free is free indeed. Not sort of free, but really free. Jesus isn't offering you some kind of cheap imitation of freedom. He said, I've come that you may have life and have it to the full. Second Peter 1.3 reminds us that we've actually been given everything we need to live a life of freedom. 
His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of Him, that's Jesus, who called us by His own glory and goodness. See, this kind of freedom is available right now, this side of heaven, to all who believe. So do you believe it? Then let's start living like it's true. We've been set free from all that's held us back and set free to live the life God intended for us to live. Let's take hold of that truth today and enjoy living free because that's courageous living. At the 700 Club Canada, we are on a mission to rescue people and bring them to life. Will you join us in this rescue mission? It can be as simple as $20 a month or join us at one of our other monthly partner levels. Or maybe you're able to give a generous annual gift. Call us today at 1-855-759-0700 or you can easily give online at 700club.ca. God bless you. What a powerful show, eh, Bill? I mean, the truth that we are actually set free. We have to take hold of this and really believe it. Yeah, well, I think we were designed for freedom. And often Jesus would ask people, do you want to be free or do you want to be healed? He would ask them and they would declare, yes, I do. And I think for many of us, we actually have to declare it and claim it and then walk in it. Yeah, hundred percent. I totally agree with you. And I think sometimes, you know, if we have, well, the enemy certainly doesn't want us to believe that we can, our freedom is available, does he? He wants to keep us deceived. Absolutely. Well, I, I think of the story of uh, a tiger that had been kept in captivity for so long that even when they tried to open the door to his cage, it refused to go out because it still felt in its mind that it was the captive. And Jesus has flung the door open for us so we get to walk in that. And speaking of that, I think we should pray today for those that they experience freedom. And so, Susan, you asked that we would pray for your husband, Darren, to be free from the addiction of alcohol. We're going to pray and believe with you for that. And Lori also sent us a request, and she asked that us, for us to pray for good physical and mental health of her son, Connor, and that he, may he feel the love of Jesus. So why don't you lead us, Bill? Absolutely. So, Jesus, I thank you that you came to bring us freedom and you didn't just declare it you made it happen through your death and resurrection that even you prove death cannot limit us hold us back so my prayer is for freedom i pray for darren and for connor for their freedom as as has been requested but for all those watching right now that they would actually declare help me to be free and they would walk in it i ask this in the mighty and powerful name of jesus amen Amen. Well, thank you for watching today and live free because you have been set free. Yeah. To contact us, visit 700club.ca.